okay good morning everyone ready so, ready today we are going to again start with our lecture on buckling of columns so today we are okay so on your screen you are seeing a beam column this beam column is subjected to a axial load p and at the same time this beam column is experiencing a transverse load capital f exactly at the midpoint of the beam column length of the beam column is capital l now let us make a deformed shape of the beam column that is the deformed elastic curve if you look at the deformed elastic curve, elastic curve we find the deformed elastic curve find that that this elastic curve at location x from left end is experiencing a bending moment capital m now we will apply ordinary second order differential equation ei d square v by dx square equal to m and we know that in this case m would be equal to minus pv minus fx by 2 for x lying between 0 and l by 2 again here let us take lambda square equal to p by ei and if we substitute in this differential equation then we have with us d square v by dx square plus lambda square v equal to minus lambda square f divided by 2p multiplied by x and the solution of this differential equation would be v equal to c1 sine lambda x plus c2 cos lambda x minus fx divided by 2p now let us apply the boundary conditions at x equal to 0 v should be equal to 0 that means c2 is 0 and let us dif uh, differentiate the elastic curve. We get v dash equal to c1 lambda cos lambda x minus f divided by 2p. And we can understand that at x equal to l by 2, this v dash or the slope should be equal to 0. So this gives us c1 equal to capital F divided by. 2p lambda cos lambda l by 2. So elastic curve expression becomes v equal to f by 2p lambda sine lambda x divided by cos lambda l by 2 minus fx by 2p. Where now let us put 2 equal to lambda l by 2. If we do that, we have expression of elastic curve as f divided by 2p lambda bracket star sine lambda x divided by cos u minus lambda x bracket close. Also, please appreciate that maximum value of deflection would be achieved at x equal to l by 2. Right? And we can find out that this maximum deflection can be written as v max equal to f divided by 2 pi lambda bracket star tangent u minus u bracket close. Now let us try to evaluate expression of maximum bending moment and we can understand that the maximum bending moment would be at the center of the beam, beam color and the absolute value of that would be fl by 4 plus v e v max and we have already derived expression of Vmax. If we substitute it here, then you can see that maximum value of bending moment comes out to be f divided by 2 lambda into tangent u. Now, let us argue that oh, bending moment would become very large, infinite, when u becomes small <laughs> multiple of n by uh, pi by 2. This gives us uh the critical situation and from here we can find out the critical load the critical load here can be found out if we take u equal to n pi by 2 
u is lambda l by 2 so equating the uh, equate putting this lambda l by 2 equal to u here we get the expression for nth critical load as n square pi square ei divided by l square now please appreciate that we are interested in the least value of the critical load and that least value of the critical load would be obtained corresponding to n equal to 1 so uh, now again let us uh, find the taylor series expression of tangent u so that is u plus u cube by 3 plus 2 by 15 u raised to power 5 plus 17 divided by 315 u to the power 7 plus like that and also please see that we have the expression of v max which we had derived earlier and it is there in front of your screen if we now substitute value of tangent u here then we get v max as f by 2b lambda 1 by 3 lambda l by 2 whole cube bracket start 1 plus 2 by 5 u square root 17 by 105 u raised to power 4 plus like that and bracket close here now let us substitute u is equal to lambda l by 2 and after some manipulations we can see that u square becomes equal to 2.47 uh, 2.4674 into p divided by p critical let us substitute this value of u in the expression of Vmax. And here in this expression of Vmax, you can see that this expression is in terms of P by PCR, where PCR is the critical load. And the coefficients of P by PCR are almost equal to one. You can approximate it equal to be one. And this infinite series now can be approximated as Vmax approximately equal to FL cube divided by 48 EI bracket start one divided by one minus P by PCR bracket close. From this expression, we can see that the maximum deflection is proportional to uh, the transverse load F and when P is critical load, this expression of Vmax becomes very large. Right, so uh, that is the role of the critical load in a typical beam column experiencing axial load and transverse load. So we get a multiplying factor one divided by one by minus P by PCR. Where you can see FLQ by 48 EI is the general expression of a beam which is experiencing a central load capital F, right? Okay, now let us look at this infinitesimally small beam element. This infinitesimally small beam element is experiencing a transverse load Q and at the same time this beam column is experiencing shear loads also. On the left side it is experiencing a shear load capital V on the right side it is experiencing a shear load v plus dv on the left side it is experiencing a bending moment capital m on the right side it is experiencing a bending moment m plus dm and in this infinitesimally small beam column please see that uh, <coughs> point a and point B. The difference between these two points is B. So this is the vertical deformation of point A from the original uh, datum. And we can see that EV by DX represents the turn of the infinitesimally small uh, beam element. In this element, we will be talking about small theta. When theta is small, then tangent theta is approximately equal to th sine theta and sine theta is approximately equal to theta and cos theta equal to 1. 
and here in this beam column let us equate all the vertical forces equal to if we do that then we get qdx plus v minus bracket start v plus dv bracket close equal to zero and also let us take moments about point a equal to zero all moments about point a equal to zero if we do that we have with us m minus pdv minus m minus dm plus 2dx into x by 2 plus vdx equal to zero this is obtained by taking moments about point a equal to zero in this expression please see that we have a we have a term which involves multiplication of very small infinitesimal quantities so with comparison to other quantities we can neglect this term and if we neglect this term we are left with v capital v equal to p dv by dx plus dm by dx this is the expression which we get from this equation and from uh, equating all the vertical forces equal to zero we get dv by dx equal to q so these are the two now governing equations of a typical beam column please see a typical beam for that also we can write dv by dx equal to q where this uh, v is capital v is shear force and for a typical beam we write capital v equal to dm by dx but for a beam column we write capital v equal to dm by dx plus p dv by dx where small v this v is beam deflection now again we can write d square m by dx square plus p d square v by dx square equal to q, q. this is obtained by substituting the value of capital v in the expression dv by dx equal to q again taking lambda square equal to p by ei and taking capital m equal to ei d square v by dx square we get fourth order ordinary differential equation for a beam column which is ei d4 v dx4 plus lambda square ei d square v by dx square equal to q this fourth order ordinary differential equation this has the homogeneous solution small v equal to c1 sine lambda x plus c2 cos lambda x plus c3 x plus c4 and where these constants of integration can be obtained from the boundary conditions and also if we take capital m equal to d square v by dx square we can write capital v equal to ei dq v by dx cube plus p dv by dx important thing to remember is these two equations d capital v by dx equal to q and capital v which is the shear force equal to p dv by dx plus dm by dx okay now let us compare the expressions which we have derived from for beam column with the expressions which we have for beam for beam we have capital v equal to dm by dx and for beam column we have capital v equal to dm by dx plus p dv by dx for beam column we have q equal to dv by dx and for beam also we have q equal to dv by dx where here this v is the capital v shear force now let us look at another case in this case you can see a uh, beam which is experiencing a axial load capital p and at the ends it is experiencing bending moments capital m naught the governing fourth order ordinary differential equation for this beam column would be 
d square v by dx x is to power 4 plus uh, again uh, the governing fourth order differential equation for this would be d4 v by dx4 plus lambda square d square v by dx square equal to q by ei now here in this case since q is equal to zero so we have uh, zero on the right hand side solution of this differential equation would be small v equal to c1 sine lambda x plus c2 cos lambda x plus c3 x c4 now let us uh, derivate this expression four times so on your screen you are seeing expression for v dash expression for v double dash expression for v triple dash and also expression for v four dash if we substitute this in the uh, governing equation we see that everything cancels out and we get zero so all this is to just stress that <coughs> solution of differential equation is v equal to c1 sine lambda x plus c2 cos lambda x plus c3 x plus c4 now boundary conditions are at x equal to 0 v is 0 at x equal to l v is 0 at x equal to 0 bending moment is minus m naught at x equal to capital l bending moment is minus m naught from these boundary conditions we can find out uh, values of c1 c2 c3 and c4 which you are seeing in front of your screen which is which you are seeing on your screen right so once we know the values of c1 c2 c3 and c4 we can get the expression for elastic curve so here is the expression for elastic curve and it would be it would maximize as uh, maximize at x equal to l by 2 and we can find out the expression for maximum deflection also now let us uh, look at euler buckling load for a column with pendants we have already derived the euler buckling load for a column with pendant ends in our previous classes but here we will do uh, again just to see that how using this fourth order differential equation we can arrive at the load so we will take the fourth order differential equation d4v by dx4 plus lambda square d square v by dx square equal to 0 here apply the boundary conditions at x equal to 0 v is 0 at x equal to l v is 0 at x equal to 0 capital m is 0 at x equal to capital l again m is equal to 0. if we apply these boundary conditions we get four equations c2 plus c4 equal to 0 then another equation which we get is c1 sine lambda l plus c2 cos lambda l plus c3 l plus c4 equal to 0 then we get c2 lambda square ei equal to 0 and finally we get minus c1 lambda square ei sine lambda l minus c2 lambda square ei cos lambda l equal to 0. now these four equations can be written in a matrix form and we can get we get a matrix capital a now to get a non-trivial solution this determinant of matrix a should become equal to zero now if we equate the determinant of matrix a equal to zero we get at the end minus p square sine lambda l equal to zero that is for non-trivial solution we should have lambda l equal to pi this now allows us to find out the critical load lambda l equal to pi now let us square both the sides we get lambda square l square equal to pi square that means p by ei l square equal to pi square. from here now we can find out critical load pcr equal to pi square ei divided by l square so in this class what we have studied is we have studied beam column beam column is different from a beam in the sense that it experiences load which are typical beam experiences and also it experiences load which are typical column experiences so this is a typical beam column in front of in on your on your screen what we did 
we simply applied uh, the governing second order differential equation on it, which we have been studying from time. And then we found out the expression of the elastic curve. And then we found out uh, what would be the maximum deflection. We found out the expression of maximum bending moment. From there, we found out what should be the expression of critical load, right? Then we also went ahead and we took an infinitesimally small beam column. And in this, first of all, we equated all the forces in the y direction equal to zero. And also we equated all the moments about point A equal to zero. From these two equations, we found out the governing differential equations of a beam column, which are dv by dx equal to q and capital V equal to p dv by dx plus dm by dx. Right? So then when we substitute these two equations, we get fourth order governing differential equation of a beam column, which is d square v by dx4 plus lambda square d square v by dx square equal to u by EI, right? Then we took a typical case of a beam column in which there is bending moment M naught at the ends and axial load capital P. And finally, what we did today was we found out Euler buckling load for a column with pinned end. We arrived at the expression of the critical load for a column with pinned end spores as pi square E divided by L square.